Uh, I would submit, um, kind of as a preliminary, that there has been no Darwinian pr progress on explaining molecular machinery, and that all of the stuff that has been alluded to and, and much, much more is actually just regular biochemistry, which is being spun in a Darwinian fashion. Uh, let me start uh, with the bacterial flagellum and the type 3 secretory system. The uh, idea which has been popularized by uh, Ken Miller is that perhaps this type 3 secretory system, which is actually kind of just a little injection apparatus, uh, could have been a precursor to the bacterial flagellum, which is in fact a rotary motor. And to get across the problem with that, I'm going to start with kind of a cartoon example uh, that uh, I started with and, and Ken Miller picked up on. I, I started to illustrate the, uh, the idea of irreducible complexity, I used a mouse trap. And I think probably many <coughs> people in the audience are, 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 uh, are um, familiar with that. A mouse trap has a number of different parts, uh, and uh, all of the parts are necessary. And in a number of different, um, different uh, venues, Ken, Ken has uh, said, well, you can use the mouse trap for other things. You can use it for a clipboard. You can remove pieces and use it as a keychain. You can even use part of it as a, as a paperweight. Oh, <laughs> thanks very much for putting that up. I was going to surprise people with these pictures, though. <laughs> <laughs> and here's a real mouse trap. And it sounds pretty good when he says that. But when you see pictures of real clipboards and keychains and paperweights, somehow the idea is this would be used to make a keychain, which would be used to make a clipboard. This would somehow end up as a mousetrap. Uh, and and uh, I want to emphasize that it's real easy. There, there's kind of a, 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 a rhetorical dissymmetry or asymmetry in, in, this, in this debate in that Darwinists want you to think that making transitions is easy. So they'll kind of say, oh, well, that's no problem. Let's just start with a paperweight, and then we can go to a keychain. So it's not irreducible. My but I, I would suggest, oh, let me okay. finish I, this I, sentence. I, 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 the only thing is that uh, going from a paperweight to a keychain is not the same as going from a gene uh, for one function to another. That maybe five mutations are sufficient. Yeah, well, this, was, this, wasn't my, uh, this wasn't my analogy. This was Ken Miller's analogy. Okay. <laughs> and I just want to suggest that here's the problem. Not only is this, I, I would consider this an intellectually unserious response to the problem of, of irreducible complexity. Another problem is that if you ask yourself, if you start with some structure that's being selected to be a paperweight, it's not going to be prepared at all to be a keychain. Okay. A structure that's a keychain isn't going to be prepared at all for a clipboard. And if somebody says, I'm going to accept this and use it for a clipboard, well, you may as well say, I'm going to accept a paperweight. You haven't gone any of the way towards a clipboard. But Michael, what about the question I asked? OK, I, 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 I thought I was answering it. <laughs> now, let me, let me continue then. Uh, could we go uh, to? The, uh, skip the next two slides to the third. This is kind of a slide that's similar to the one that Professor Weber showed. There we go. Thank you very much. And here's the, the, uh, here's the um, idea. Suppose you have an irreducibly complex molecular machine made up of six different parts uh, labeled A to F. Suppose that they started out as individual precursors, each of which had their own, uh, their own function. Could you, next slide please. Now suppose they got together somehow. Now you could have an irreducibly complex machine, the story goes, but each of the parts had their own, their own function. And I submit that even if all of these things are doing the exact same thing they would do in the irreducibly complex machine, you still can't get from these parts to here, even if they're doing the same thing. And why is that? Well, here is one, here's one uh, reason. Proteins are not little colored squares. <laughs> exactly. They are not little colored figures like Ken Miller showed on his slide. Why does the A go next to the B here, besides being in the alphabet there? Why doesn't it go down here? 
Why aren't these in a line instead of something like this? What makes a real protein stick to another real protein and another real protein stick to that? They stick to each other because they have very complex surfaces which are matched to each other. The chemical and physical properties have to be just so, like little magnets that are lined up uh, in, in order to allow them to bind. Could I have the next slide, please? This is the real problem that would face that scenario. You would have proteins, A, B, C, D, which did not have the right shapes in order to bind to each other. In order to form a molecular, uh, an irreducibly complex molecular machine, they would have to pre-adapt all of their shapes in order just to bind to each other.